Hey, I'm Jordan. I'm here at the Penn Skull Ice Flyers game, and you're watching Post to Post. Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. And I'm supporting a KHL jersey here. I got a Slovakia hat on. You've got a SHL Lulia shirt. Uh, it's because we're going to talk some international hockey. Yeah. Uh, the Spengler Cup. And not everyone watches the Spengler Cup. Understandably, it doesn't have the big name players and stuff, but it's really good hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get enough attention it deserves, and it's being played in potentially the most beautiful arena in the world. I the, would say. Uh, the Davos. From the ones I've seen. In Switzerland. Wow. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a beautiful arena. If you, if you have a chance, please watch the any Spangler Cup games uh, over this Christmas, over this holidays break. Uh, it's great hockey. And just look for a, a shot of the goalies on either end or the net cam. You'll mm. see the cathedral style ceiling, the, the wood beam ceiling, and how the fans are all integrated into the game. Lots of standing room, lots yep. of sitting room. It is probably one of the most gorgeous hockey venues I've ever seen. And we've already discussed it in a previous Post Post video on, uh, we look at Switzerland arenas, mm -hmm. and it, it's in that video. So yeah. we watched the first game of the Spangler Cup. It was against uh, Switzerland against the Dinamo Riga out of the KHL. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. Uh, Switzerland won, I think, 6-1. I didn't watch the very end of the game, but I think it ended 6-1. And it was a very frustrating game to watch for no other reason than who was broadcasting it. Oh my God. It had nothing to do with the game itself. Well, I guess it did. That there were a few things. Okay, let's just first start off. I I took notes during the game. That's like that's how many. I, I was getting annoyed so much. I'm like, okay, I gotta make a list because this is a video. The refing uniforms. I'm gonna try and show a picture of it, uh, just off somewhere on the screen. They're the same color as the home jerseys. They have got these black and white triangle things at the bottom, but the rest of the jersey is white. Yeah. And even the 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 play by play announcers commented it commented on it during the game yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're camouflaged with the, the rest of the team. I yeah. I don't understand that decision. At one point, the ref put his arm up for a penalty, and the announcer said, "I can't see." Yeah, I, I couldn't see that he'd called a penalty because his arm blended in with with everything else. So I don't know who made that decision within the Spangler Cup committee, but or the refing committee. Uh, thumbs down on that. Thumbs down. That was, that was a terrible down. decision. That was awful. Second, speaking of announcers. Oh. So we had uh, Doug doing the the color down between the benches. Yeah. And we had Steve Coolius doing the play-by-play -play from above. Or I guess he wasn't above in, in this specific game. He was down by the blue line, I think. I think he was above the blue line. I think he was up high. Oh, yeah, he, he was, was up high, but he was above. At the level yeah, of the blue line, above, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, it, we've complained about uh, boot goal. We've complained about... Gary Galley, we complained about Paul Romanuk. Who else have we complained about? Yeah, and we're allowed to complain. They're professionals. We're nobodies. Yeah, we're no, we're, we're nobodies. We make mistakes. So we can complain. We make mistakes all the time. All the time. And and your viewers are quite happy to point out those mistakes immediately in the comment mm -hmm. section, which is fine. And I could easily go and edit out those mistakes or uh, delete the video or something like that. But we do this as a hobby. It's just for yeah. fun. I don't care if we make mistakes. We're not professionals. We don't get paid to do it. We're just having some fun. But They're professionals. people are pros. Like, these are professionals. Professionals. Not only the professionals that are getting paid to do this, they're being flown around the world to do these games. You'd think they would know the name of the team on the ice. And they didn't. A couple of times. A couple of times. It was Dinamo Moscow. Yeah, Dinamo Moscow. No. No, it was Dinamo Riga. Dinamo Riga. A little frustrating. Um... But Steve, it was mostly Steve. Steve Coolius. His voice. He has this... Steve Coolius talks in a monotony when he's calling a hockey game and it sounds just about like that and there's really no change in the in the, the, the tone of his voice when he's talking. And it's just like that and it's almost like being in a church but not as good as being in a church because at least, you know, your spirit doesn't get saved. You're just watching hockey. It's just, it drones on and on. And just, Unbelievable. It, it just it's really frustrating to listen to. Yeah. There's no wave and flow of his voice. There's no inflection. There's just this tone of annoyingness, I guess. <laughs> and he does this thing, and we can't show it, but I want you to watch a Spangler Cup game just for this, because he'll be talking to someone like this, and, and then so he'll, he'll do the interview. He'll ask me a question. He's pretending to be Steve. And I'm talking, and then Steve does this, where he just he, he zips back to the camera and gives it a look and a smile, and then zips back to the person he's talking to like that. And it's like, well, what are you doing, Steve? Like, just to tone it down. Get off the Kool-Aid. Get off the Kool-Aid. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. 
Right. Now, back in, until about 2010, this is when I first started noticing him. He was on the score. Yeah. And there was always a two-man panel. So they're in the studio. I didn't even know he did play-by-play -play until, unfortunately, today. But he'd be in the, a two-man panel, sitting behind the sports desk, going, going over the, the evening scores or the day before scores. And he would throw to the other guy or the other gal, as the case may be. And all the time they're talking, he's doing this. And he keeps, and he keeps staring into the camera. It's creepy. Even when he's not talking. <laughs> and it's okay if you, you know, casually look around the studio. I look around all the time. You guys yeah. probably noticed that. I'm, I'm, I look at the camera sometimes, but there's a lot of times I just look around. But he just snaps to the camera and snaps yeah. away. And that's the first thing that bothered me about him. I just, it just drove me nuts that he's doing, doing that. <laughs> anyway, he did it again today. He's interviewing a player. No, no, the, the, the two commentators, him and Doug. And I can't remember Doug's last name. I apologize. Doug's mm. pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah, we like Doug. So they're standing there by the by the boards, by the half wall, uh, prior to the game. And Steve's got the mic, and he's interviewing Doug. So like, what do you think? Doug's going to be a good game today. You know, there are two teams that are playing. They're both, uh, one of them is you know, trying to go to the Olympics. And he'll pass the mic to Doug, and he'll look at Doug. And then all the time Doug's talking, he's got the mic in front of Doug's face. And he keeps snapping to the camera. <laughs> he did it eight times. I counted. Eight. Eight times. Uh. Steve. And it's not just like a, just a casual, just kind of look back and just agree and stuff. It's like, look, a little like creepy smile and then back. Yeah, and it's, creepy smile it's, too. It looks, it's so intentional that it's just, it's it, weird. It's, but, it's contrived, yeah, it's, it's artificial. It's just terrible. a little thing to complain about there, but yeah. uh, just a funny thing. Now, there are a few other funny things that happened <laughs> in the game. One was the interesting water bottle situation. So I'm going to put a picture of it on the screen here. The, the penalty box are, are, are actually pretty cool because they've got airline seats for the players to sit on out of a plane and then behind them it looks like a fake back of a plane. Cool idea. And, and the person handing the, out things The is... person is made to look like a flight attendant and, and they're holding the water bottle and stuff for the players if they want to drink. And a towel. And a towel. Would you like a drink? Unfortunately, the water bottle looked like a giant goat nipple, I guess. I don't... I mean, I don't know. It looked it looked like a weird like. And I'm the goat, but it's not mine. No, it's not your nipple. Not it just looked like a weird goat nipple or like an anal probe thing or like I don't want to be offensive, but it just it looked strange, like something that you would use to do a medical procedure. <laughs> and like every person that they tried, every person they tried to hand the water bottle to, every player they like looked at it and like, no, <laughs> I'm not putting no, my mouth I'm on not, that. No, I'm not no putting my mouth on that. So it's, it's, uh, I don't know why water bottle technology had to change uh, for the Spangler Cup, but uh, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys had some good laughs at the picture there that was shown. Uh, um, back to the game itself. There was a goal review, which I could understand there being a goal review. It was, it happened quick, but the goal review itself took like six minutes and yeah. it was clearly in the net on the first replay that we saw. So uh, I get maybe they're just getting used to the process and stuff. It was the first game. I'll let that go. No problem. Uh, there was a goalie change after two goals, four minutes into the game. Yeah. How bad is like Dino how bad is your, your day? Goalie. Yeah. How much confidence do you have in your goalie? Two goals on four shots, Ooh. and uh, I think he probably should have saved the second one, but not the first one. It was just a completely defensive collapse, basically on both mm -hmm. goals uh, by Dino. What we're looking at is almost the entire roster of what will become the Swiss Olympic team. Yeah, they're trying hard to... There's a few more players from HC Davos that will stay with Davos for this tournament, but then they will begin to practice and play with the Swiss Olympic team, and yep. they'll go to South Korea, and they'll be competitive. They're playing a club team that is 26th out of 27 teams in the KHL. Right, they're not doing very good right now. They're not going, they're doing very well. So I would expect, even if on an optimistic day, that we're likely not the favorite. Right. And if my goalie lets in two at the beginning, I would probably say, you know, like he just needs to settle down. The game's barely started. Right. But no. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it was frustrating, uh, and, and he was he was pissed too. The goalie. Yeah. Uh, he he didn't want to get pulled. No. Uh, what else do we have down here? I've got uh, the commercial timing was weird, very strange. Like they would, they would take a break and they would show people clearing the ice in this little like go kart <laughs> zamboni thing that would come on the ice. And usually in the, during the NHL, that's the time that you'd get the commercial. Yeah. So no commercial there. No which commercial. Was okay. And then the yeah. game would start up again, and there'd be a whistle, 
and the face off would be coming and then they go to commercial and then 45 seconds later you'd come back from the commercial and they, there'd be play the play would just be going on yeah the play is uh, underway like why didn't you take the commercial during the ice clearing situation <laughs> which happens in, like it was a very strange i don't know if that's a Sp spengler decision or a tsn decision or yeah. an international decision i don't know but probably was, a, a communication thing yeah absolutely. i don't know it's a little strange but i think that well i, I looked it up the game is being shown in 13 different countries. There's 13 different networks in okay. up to 40 different countries. Huh. So there's probably a pool of cameras and that right. you're, you're fed whatever you're fed. If you're TSN, if you're ESPN, or if you're whatever, Sky News, Sky Sports, you're mm -hmm. being fed what you're being fed. And there's communications that goes with that. You have to need to get back to Toronto and say, okay, we're going to run a commercial in the next whistle. Yep. And so that all has to happen and from a foreign country in a foreign location your very first game there are going to be some hitches mm -hmm. like that totally but these are professionals they really shouldn't be hitches not in 2017 right i agree with that when you've got instantaneous communication back and forth and then there was this time maybe you're going to bring it up i don't want to jump the gun but there's several times during the game where the two guys couldn't hear each other that's the last on my list yet okay and so you'd hear uh, Steve calling the game and then you'd hear Doug I can't hear Steve I can't, I can't hear Steve I can't hear Steve say that again I can't hear yeah. Steve and then Steve would throw it to Doug and Doug would actually get that throw so he'd start talking and yeah Steve yeah uh, down here in the corner there was this and there was that and uh, back to you Steve and then Steve would start talking again and then you'd hear Doug say I can't talk if you keep yeah, talking yeah, to me don't talk to me don't talk to me when I'm doing that <laughs> So he's obviously got headphones on, and someone's talking to him in the headphones. They can't hear each other. For one moment of time, I think it was maybe in the second period, we couldn't hear Steve. Yeah, we couldn't hear Steve at all. So we just had the game. Mm. Best part of the game. It was great. It was amazing. It was awesome. Yeah. We had about 25 seconds of no announcer. Mm. He was talking, but then every so often you could hear Doug saying, I can't hear Steve. <laughs> I can't hear Steve. It was like if Saturday Night Live did a funny skit to yeah. make fun of this like it, it but was, it was it real was comical. Yeah. but it was real that's the sad part and one thing about the spangler cup that i love is that they have mics on the linesmen oh, yeah. and the refs so when it when you're going up to a, a face-off you can hear the audio that the linesman is is saying to the players like okay you get ready to put your sticks down okay i need you to put your stick down uh you over there just move over a little bit like you can hear everything but silly old Steve, just like, no, nah, I don't want to listen to that. I'm going to talk. Oh, I'm going to talk all over it. I don't want you to really hear it. So I'm just going to talk about whatever so you can't hear it. It was really annoying. It was very annoying. Because I wanted to hear that audio. And that's probably a pool thing again. Uh, this, the producers of the Spengler Cup said, you know, let's let's put the microphone on the linesman and let them talk, you know. So they did. And it was very interesting insight into the game totally. if you could have heard it. Now, other broadcasters probably are smart enough to shut up mm. when that's going on so you can hear what the linesman's saying. We're probably the only broadcaster that is understanding the language the linesman's using because they're using English on the ice. Yep. And that's unfair to the Venezuelan viewers and the Czechoslovakian viewers, but they're talking in English. And we could have heard it, but for the fact that Coolius was running his mouth the whole time mm. over top of it. Now, before we did this video, we wanted to look online and see if anyone else had, uh, or see if anyone had positive outlooks of Steve Coolius, because uh, we wanted to share some of those as well, just yeah. because, you know, we're, no In one's In the interest no of journalistic fairness. And, yeah, we want to be fair, so we just, we, yeah. we did find uh, a quote of someone who, or we found a quote that was very favorable of Steve. Can yeah. you read it? I will. Steve Coolius is one of the most energetic and knowledgeable broadcasters I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. He's akin to a hockey historian, so deep and passionate for his love of the game. He always brings out the best in others while being a total team player. I miss working alongside my friend and watching him crush the airwaves on a nightly basis. And that's from Adnan Virk of ESPN. And that was posted on... SteveCoolius.ca <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So clearly there's some inside stuff going on there. And uh, he got that, Steve purposely got that quote from, from his friend there and to put it on his website, which is fine. Uh, but that's the only positive thing we could find that someone else said about Steve Coolius was on his own website. Uh, we looked on Twitter, we looked online, and... Uh, Canada's so best sportscaster. That says on his site? On his own site, yeah. Okay, so unfortunately we are stuck with Steve for the rest of the Spangler Cup, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to we're not gonna watch. Uh, so I uh, hope you guys can watch, watch some Spangler Cup, and if you did see the first game like we did, 
comment down below and, and tell us how you feel. And if you if you heard watched it from a different country and had different uh, announcer than Steve, then let us know how your local announcer was. So thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you liked it. And we'll see you in the next video. Adios. Oh, and thanks, Kale, for the jersey. I love it. Thanks. Adios.